Hey everyone, Sam here. Um, I'm just feeling like making a quick video. Um, the catalyst for making this video was really um, Rob Catton's big achievement on PRISM just this past weekend. Um, if anyone doesn't know, he won the battle hardened on PRISM Awakener Assault in the process taking down quite a few guardians on a list which is entirely using Luminaris Angel's Glow. Um, the the sort of like general consensus at the time is that the only way of beating Guardian currently is to use Iris of Reality, um, which really sort of hinders and warps the deck building potential. Um, and Rob Cannon just kind of blew it out of the water and said, nah, we're gonna smash it out of the park with Luminaris Angel's Glow and make that matchup super ultra favored, even on a weapon that doesn't seem like it can actually do anything against that matchup. Um, and yeah, huge props to Rob. What I'm making this video about is simply to bring to light more of some of the members in the Flesh and Blood community who have been working on this deck, playing with this deck, and we, we may not have been working with Rob specifically, um, but it's more just to bring to light people who have been playing a very similar version of this list, have lots of experience on it, um, and just be able to present that to you guys and let you know that, hey, we have this and it's not just um, Rob that's been doing this. Um, just to clarify, this is not meant to diminish Rob's achievement in any way, shape or form. I'm merely trying to place light on some others who've been testing the deck and are experienced with it within the community. So yeah, here we go. So first things first, the Luminaris Angel's Glow was first revealed on the 10th of December 2023. Um, so at the, at the time we all saw it and we're like, okay, this totally changes what Prism can do. If we have a yellow card in our pitch zone, we, our first Herald and our first Angel both get go again. Uh, this is crazy. This totally changes what we can do with the deck. We're allowed to put yellow cards back in. We're not locked behind only two action points every turn. We can now play three attacks. Um, but when you look at the card, you're, there's a lingering thought in the back of your mind of, oh, your Herald gets go again. Well, that doesn't help us against Guardian because Guardian's just going to pop our Herald. Okay, but our Angel gets go again. But you're not going to get Angels unless your Heralds are hitting. How do we deal with this? Is it possible to beat Guardian with Luminaris? And for a good amount of time, the general consensus here is that no, you're not playing Luminaris into Guardian, you're actually playing Iris of Reality. And that just became the general consensus for a good long while, even after Luminaris was revealed. And for some of us, we were happy with that, and we're like, cool, we're just going to build around Iris. But from the very start, there's been uh, one person who I'll introduce you, you may know her, um, is Sable Wang Wills. Uh, she has been an incredible powerhouse behind a full mono Luminaris Angels Glow deck for the longest time. Um, here she is, you'll be able to find her on Discord, but here she is right here um, saying exactly that, that you can beat Guardian purely on a Luminaris Angels Glow build and she's been saying this from the 15th of December, so just five days after the the card was even revealed, she's been saying, hey, yep, this is playable, and we can beat Guardian. And this was on a totally unrefined version of the build at the time, and it's just gotten better and better. In the two months, it's become such a playable matchup, and one that you can pretty consistently win it's even like quite favored just on a luminaris build and recently we've obviously seen rob catton do very well with a very similar build and this is kind of blown everyone out the, out of the water and i just wanted to bring to light sable and what she's been doing the, with the deck and essentially show you exactly what my thoughts on the deck, my experience with the deck have been, as well as sort of shouting her out in the process. So over in this next tag, I've got the version of the list I'm currently using. Um, if we go over to the info, 
we can see I, I first created this one on January 28th, so that's relatively recently, um, but yeah, a few earlier versions and such, but I haven't, I haven't changed the list since the 1st of February. Um, and yeah, here's the deck. Uh, quite similar to Rob's list, we have Rapture, Halo, Luminaris, Footsteps um, as the sort of main board, aggro main board with Rapture, and that's kind of the general consensus on what we're going to be playing. The Goliath Gauntlet, I feel, is really strong in buffing those eruditions or just important breakpoints against decks where either they're not going to have a popper or you can play around that popper for that turn, that sort of thing. Um, Goliath is only arms piece aside from the Null Rune, and I feel like it, it does its work in every matchup, and we can see that in a sec. The the Herald package we've got, we've got the Protection Triumph Warchune. Only seven protection with two reds and two blues is kind of where I've landed just because of a tight sideboard. Um, so eight red heralds. Triumph and Warchune are your best heralds by far. Um, the Triumph effect is incredible against most decks. Against a lot of decks, it just doesn't have Phantasm. Like, they only have pure sixes instead of sevens. And Warchune Herald has an insane cost curve and it can be played against um like it, it allows you to send two heralds in a turn as well as swing the angel in the middle off a four card hand um and what that does into aggro matchups is an, an insane swing uh angelic wrath we is incredible into any aggro matchup though very incentivized to block your heralds because of how how important the on hits are just searching a figment and getting that soul and being able to flip for free is like all of that is tied to a herald hitting um being able to force that through against an aggro deck is super important especially if the herald is erudition so incredible card here uh reprimand similarly does its work against poppers it's always in the main board again just slots i'm not sure if i would always like to have three of these in but it's it's good enough to be in the main board. Just a little note here that we have a lot of yellow non-blocks in the main board. And while on the initial first impressions, this doesn't sound to be a very great plan for a deck, not having a lot of blocking potential, once your first Herald hits and you start getting those figments onto the board, it's pretty easy to have a game where, despite not having cards that block, they essentially pitch for two into Prism's ability and block for four, or just have your Rapture carry the the ward across between turns by keeping your Heralds hitting and staying alive that way instead of actually blocking. Arclight Sentinel, this is also in main board for the specific use case of playing it after a Soraya swing and drawing two cards, because in that scenario... You, you may not have many action points you can deal with. It might be after a Herald and then an Angel, and so you can only swing with one more Herald this turn. And because you're locked behind the action points, you need a way of using your whole hand, and so Arclight Sentinel is your way of doing it, and it is super strong. If you land this at the end of a turn after having swung with Soraya, still having one soul and being able to attack with Soraya again to lead off the next turn is incredibly strong, and that's why Arclight is still in the deck in the main board. Running seven figments here. The only one we're not running is Tenacity. Uh, the reason for that is just it's the weakest one. Judgment might seem like the weakest, and in a lot of matchups it is basically just a meat shield, but it does insane things against... Katsu against Fi and against Shadow Heroes, you can have fringe playability there. Um, got a few Tech Lovossons in locals, and they're not very happy with this card either, but not that you need a tech for that matchup. Um, one interesting thing I noticed about Rob's list is no Figment of War. Um, this card is insane into Guardian. In the endgame, you can use this to buff up all your angels that you've already got on the field. Um, and when they're also having to deal with all your yellow auras and your passing mirages and everything else, it becomes something that they are unable to deal with, and it leaks so much more damage because I have to keep cards in order to deal with your board state. Um, 
flipping this at the very end um, of the game while you've got angels is sort of like your win con into that matchup if you're not otherwise sniping them with enough arcane damage. Say if they're playing an arcane lantern in Victor or that sort of thing, this is your other condition you can use to win. Um, I'm running the yellow of Rebirth. There's a bunch of flex heralds you could play in this slot. I noticed uh, Rob's on Herald of Tenacity, which I think is a really strong meta call into specific decks. Um, there are some decks that can block you out really well um, while still sending enough damage to threaten, threaten our life total. So being able to force through that first Herald, get that first Figment on the board is such value and Tenacity kind of makes that happen. I'm still a big fan of protection for Kano, in fact, because that matchup is not as free win as people make it out to be. If they're playing Waning Moon, it's quite difficult. Um, but yeah, Rebirth does its work into Dramai, being able to play those extra air additions and such. Uh, Light of Soul is an incredible card. Pick it up if you do not already have one, because that price is going to skyrocket. It What it does for the deck... Um, is insane in that it allows you to get additional soul, just like Soul Shield would, in ways that aren't to do with Heralds hitting. And on the times where it hits a yellow Herald, like this extra rebirth we've got here, if it hits a yellow Herald off the top, it and you're doing it during your own turn, you also search for the Figment and are able to flip it for free. And you can, as soon as you force through a Herald hit like that, it's just as good as it regularly hitting. Um, and that can swing a whole match up just by being by pitching this otherwise cracked bauble. It's incredible. Um, one that all you got is currently in the main. Um, realistically, I would like to run three, and that's the biggest place I would take this list at the moment, is being able to run three of those, because your dash, ma dash matchup is really hard, and the, um, the ninja's... Sometimes you might need that extra edge against them, so having that all you got there is really important. Um, I noticed Rob also is on only one Pierce Reality. I think this card can be pretty nuts in aggro matchups. Again, we're not looking at this de deck as kind of um, from an aggro basis. It is because of how it plays into Guardian. I, th I still think that Pierce Reality is an incredible card into Guardian. And essentially what it does is it forces them to respect the Heralds more. They're not allowed to let any hit anymore. They basically need to block with their like 8 to 10 powers instead of their pure 6s in case you have a reprimand behind it, that sort of thing. Um, so I'm still very much really liking playing three of these into Guardian. Um, yeah. Yeah. In terms of the sideboard, the Guardian sideboard is the three tomes, the three Mercifuls, the three Genesis, the Vestige, and the Library. Um, library is not necessarily required. This this card essentially allows you to snowball the game from any turn. Um, obviously, it has the issue of drawing it at the wrong time loses you the game, but I still do think that it is more of a help than it is a hindrance to the deck. Um, I would much rather be playing library than not. Um, and I don't think I've had a game yet where it has cost me the game by drawing it at the wrong time. I think it swings the matchup enough in your favor that it's worth putting it in the deck. Um, but the game plan here is really to... You're going to be taking a six life deficit on every turn that you're not drawing the, the things that you need with the things that you need being Genesis, Merciful, Tome, Passing, and Arclight. Um, so that's kind of what you're looking for. Pierce Reality as well, you're going to want to try and set up some of those double aura turns like you would with Old Prism and sort of turn the game from there. It's a pretty hard game plan to explain without seeing it. Hopefully, um, I'm going to give you some Talishar gameplay after this, show you exactly what I mean with this. I played a few, quite a lot of games with this deck actually, and it's really quite consistent. Um, thing to note here: Norin Gloves is AB for Viserai and for Kano, and Celestial Reprimand here. This is a flex slot that I've got as like a third sideboard option. So you've got the pure aggro package, 
you've got the Guardian package, which is Vestige, Merciful, Genesis, Tome. And then you've got a Brute package. And into Brute, I prefer to play Aggro with Reprimands than I prefer to play Control with the Vestige package, beca just because of how Scab Skin Leathers functions into that matchup. I don't think that you can consistently beat Brutes without the help of um, just Reprimands. Um, just because of how much the the auras are affected by scab skin leathers and how that interacts with the game. I I am very happy to be proven wrong on this, and honestly, I would love to be. If I can just play the game by playing with the auras instead of the reprimands, that would be so much better. If we look at the stats here, the results... Um, I'll just bring up my my stats here. So, yeah, as I was saying, Kano. I, I played, I think, six rounds against this one really good Kano, which is kind of why this stats come in. Um, but yeah, they can play really well with Waning Moon to deal with your angels at the wrong time and sort of chip through damage throughout the whole game. It's, again, KO, Levia, and Vincet. Obviously, all pretty difficult matchups. I think Vincet is playable because if you... If you threaten them with Phantasm, they often have to pop you with the one card that says Runegate on their turn, and if they can't play a Runegate card, they're not being able to actually play the game and put something relevant into Banish. So I think there's something to be worked out there. That being said, he's not that much part of the meta, so don't worry too much. Uh, Prism Mirror is super swingy, but there are so many combat tricks you can do in it, it's kind of crazy. Uh, and then, yeah, we've got the, the Guardians, as I was talking about. So, four on Victor, and then six versus one on Bravo, and then a Betsy over here. Uh, and yeah, that's the deck we're looking at. So, over here we've got uh, Rob's deck. Again, very similar sideboard, Goliath Gauntlet, Narun Gloves. Um, yeah, the Herald of Tenacities I found quite interesting here. I am keen to test them out. I think they would be really good into specific matchups. But the I really feel like protection has a very important place in the deck. So again, keen to see what comes of that. Uh, very similar figments. Again, figment of war. Surprised by the lack of it. To that, all you got makes sense. It's hard to fit the third one in. The extra blue herald for tome. That's that's like I feel like that's a bit of a concession for the Bravo matchup, but. Having more blue three blocks that are heralds is really good. Um, but yeah, giving that, that up at the cost of the Pierce reality has never felt that correct to me. But again, keen to keen to chat about it. Um, over here, I've got the compare decks up. So here's mine, here's Rob's. Herald of Protection versus Herald of Tenacity Red. So yeah, exactly the same, just a different choice of the Herald, the Flex Herald in that slot. And again, on the, the eight Red Heralds, I think eight's the sweet spot. It seems to be like you want it to be on nine, but eight's kind of where we've landed. Uh, the Figment of War, yeah, play the card. The card is really good. Courage Token on Enter Effect is also just free plus one. Uh, Herald of Rebirth versus Tenacity. Again, just the flex slot. Um, I've got the fewer yellow heralds than him. That's that's trying to fit in the the blue reprimands for the br brute matchup there. Um, again, I'm very 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 keen to see brute being able to be beaten with the the aura vestige package, but it doesn't seem super viable consistently. But very would love to be proven wrong there. Uh, again, those are the reprimands. Yeah, the blues just changed over a little bit. I've got only two blue protection to his three, and then he's only got one pierce reality to my three. So just a few minor changes there. And overall, the deck is very similar. So yeah, that was the deck. I've been playing this deck before armories for the past two months or so. Um, and yeah, it's starting to feel more and more consistent, and it's been a great way of breaking away from the, the dash grind set and playing something totally different, something I played for so long. I played Prism for so long before I switched to dash, and then I was just a dash guy, and it's been great to finally come back to my roots. Um, 
I'm keen to hear everyone's thoughts on the deck, particularly about like the brute matchup. I would love the Aura plan to work into that, but I just feel at the moment like Reprimands is your way to go, especially against Ko with all his fives anyway. Um, shout outs again, huge shout outs to Sable. Um, again, just the powerhouse behind this deck. Um, and again, massive congratulations to Rob Catton. Getting this deck on the map, it's now everyone knows about it. Now there's no secret spicy tech for Road to Nationals and Nationals and LA and stuff. But the deck's out there now, so there you have it. Um, I'll, I might upload some Talishar gameplay pretty soon. Um, but yeah, keep the action up and I'll catch you next time.